Welcome everyone, Inspire Me EC, coming at you live from Eau Claire Marathon headquarters. I never knew this place existed until today. Super busy day, start of June, beautiful out. And today we have our very first guest on Inspire Me EC. We are over the moon to have Eau Claire Marathon race director, Emmy Allman, I know, applause everyone. We're, okay, people are busy back there, working with apparel and things, but Emmy Allman, it's a pleasure to meet you. Actually, this is our very first time meeting, and uh, we're going to get to know Emmy. We already kind of know about the Eau Claire Marathon. It's super popular, but we kind of want to dig into uh, Emmy and maybe a little bit about her background and how she got to this uh, spot of putting on such a great event. So thank you for being my guest. Well, thanks for having me. Of course. Yeah. Um, very honored to be your first guest. <laughs> Growing up. Yep. Where were you born? And um, what were some of the things that you were interested in, such as music or sports? Uh, born and raised in Eau Claire. Sweet. Yes. So grew up here. Uh, went to high school here, then went to college in Minneapolis. And that's probably what brought me over to the Twin Cities area. But growing up, I was very involved in sports, basketball, tennis, uh, did track and field only because it was a co-ed sport and I could have fun with, you know, my boyfriend and who's now my husband at the time, we would do it together. So I never really took that serious until um, later on in life. Uh, I actually wasn't even a runner, I would say, when we took over the Oak Marathon, which oh, is wow. crazy. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, so I know you'll ask this question later, but I'll just jump kind of into it with it is, um, I ran the relay the year before we had taken it over with my dad, my mother-in-law and my husband. And we had a blast and we had so much fun. And I'm like, I am a runner now. I'm gonna start doing more of these races and uh, events like this. And that event with it then being closed after, or, or, you know, kind of decided that they weren't going to continue it. That's what took us into taking over the Oakland Marathon. Amazing. That is, um, that's in very interesting that you weren't really a runner um, going into this. So you didn't, you didn't really do, like, what, what, um, what sports did you participate in as a kid? You know, basketball and tennis were my favorite. I actually even played them both in college. So those were two sports that were the ones. And then I would do the cross country and the track just to kind of keep my aerobic, um, you know, just to help me run. Okay, so it was just a kind of a complimentary thing. Yeah. Um, so did you go to Oak, the University of Oak? I did. I went to St. Catharines up in St. Paul. So that's what brought me over to Minneapolis. Oh, okay. Yeah. Excellent. Cool. Um, so when let's rewind back to, like, when you were in third grade. So a, a teacher asked, like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Um, I'm sure there's all these other kids that are saying that they want to be a nurse or a teacher or something. And we know that Emmy Allman's not going to raise her hand and be like, um, I want to be a race director. So it's, um, what, what kind of, um, what kind of things did you want to maybe be when you were younger? You know, when I was younger, um, when I was really younger, I wanted to be an, a WNBA basketball player, which, Sweet. yes, oh. which, you Dream know, life. yeah, seriously. Um, then I wanted to be a physical therapist for a while. Um, wanted to be a coach, wanted to be a teacher. I ended up going to college to become a physical therapist, got a year into it, and decided that it would be something that I probably didn't want to continue to do. Uh, ended up getting a teaching degree. Um, wow. So kind of crazy. And I was one of those kids that knew exactly what I thought I was going to do for the rest of my life. And then from there, started selling wine. Um, so I went after college into business and wine. No, that sounds like the dream gig yeah. right there, yeah. selling wine. <laughs> so I did that. Then I started having kids so that I was a stay-at-home mom. Um, and this all came about the year before my final two twins were going to go into kindergarten. And wanted to get back into it. Had no clue what I was getting myself into. And now I could dream of nothing else besides this. Eau Claire Marathon has kind of taken over a huge part of my life. Amazing. Um, so are there any, maybe some takeaways from your education or um, experiences when you were younger, maybe um, influences from your parents that really kind of um, developed you or turned you into the woman that you are today? Um, 
I would say we were a very tight knit family. Um, so I think that is a big part of it. Yeah. Um, I, my mom was home with us and Eau Claire as a community is a very tight knit community and leaving Eau Claire, I still wanted that to be part of my kid's life. Um, so I tried to be very involved in the schools, very involved in, you know, the community with, you know, everything going on right now and trying to help, um, you know, everybody in Minneapolis that needs their help. Um, For so sure. I think things like that, I just grew up in the values that we had. We've, hoped, we've I've tried to instill in my kids and continue it. Excellent. Um, so when you, um, when you're not marathon planning, um, what does your typical day look like? Are you, uh, are you, do you wake up early? Coffee, um, coffee and running just kind of go together. Um, what are some of your hobbies as an individual and as a family? Um, pretty much there isn't a minute of my life that isn't Eau Claire Marathon or my kids. So pretty much my, a regular day if my kids were in school would be, I'd get them up, get them ready for school, have my cup of coffee. I'm not a really early riser. I kind of rise with them. Um, 9.30 is like my idea is time to work out, either going for a run. Um, I've had some glute injuries, so I've kind of had to improvise and do more of, you know, workout classes, biking, stuff like that. And I always try to get my workout done first thing in the morning. Um, and then if they're in school, it's pretty much marathon stuff all day. If they're not, it's, um, they're very active. So I'm involved in all their kids stuff and, um, kind of keeping them going. So the, the hubby works uh, full time. Yes. And so is, is he a runner? Um, no, he, he um, you know what, I, I would say yes. I think everyone is a runner. If everyone wants to be a runner, we are all runners. We can go out for a family run. We can go out for a family walk. Um, he doesn't, he, he was a big basketball player and had several cool. knee injuries, so can't really move the knee. So we've kind of improvised on some of that. But I mean, this is part of my life now. So I run and I meet people and run to know what's out there, what other people want to see in a race, what they don't want to see in a race. Um, and just connecting that way, which is very fun that I can be exercising at the same time as connecting through my job. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Um, so are there any challenges, um, you face being a Minnesota resident and having to put on this Eau Claire marathon year in and year out. I know it's not that far away, but really are, are there any difficulties um, putting things together oh. or coordinating? Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely a, a different, there's a different approach to it, I guess you would say. Um, every time I come to Eau Claire though, I go home and I tell my husband, I wanna live in Eau Claire again. I love Eau Claire, I love everything about Eau Claire. So, to be able to have this race and have it bring me home to Eau Claire all the time, um, I I will treasure for the rest of my life. Um, events like this, being able to coordinate with you know things that are going on in Minnesota and helping you know Eau Claire be involved in events, you know um, this food, you know the clothing drive and all that that we're doing, um, I take it on the positives. I try to find the advantages. I have a fantastic committee of about twenty five people that are in Eau Claire, and this race would not happen without them. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm very lucky to have them. Um, I'm just going to say that I, I wouldn't, and all, everyone else probably wouldn't mind if you would um, relocate and live in Eau Claire. That would be, um, I'm just going to, we're... Um, I'm trying to get my daughter, she's a, so or a sophomore right now, I'm trying to get her to go to Eau Claire. I'm like, I love the University of Eau Claire, I love everything about it. It's a re real big push to try to get her to come back here. It's such a, you know, Minnesota is a great place to live too, but, but um, it might be a little biased, but I um, I love Eau Claire yeah. too. Oh, it is. And like, you know, where the new start and the finish is and that area of Eau Claire that has just grown over the last five, 10 years, it it's amazing everything that's here. It is, yes. Um, so let's, let's talk about Eau Claire Marathon statistics. Um, so how long has the event been going on? Let's talk about the race size and maybe... Um, the participants, um, where do you want to see the number, where it's currently at, how much has grown? Yeah. Um, maybe talk about some of the, what, what do you allow for the youngest participants? Um, and, um, what are some of the oldest one, oldest participants that we've had? Um, maybe talk about, um, 
possibility of doing relay teams. Every year we seem to see like firefighters and um, maybe just uh, walkers also. There's yeah. been walkers that have walked the entire Eau Claire Marathon distance. Um, so could we just touch on yeah, those stats? Definitely. Um, so we and my dad and myself kind of took it over in November of 2013. So 2014 was our first race. Um, but this, so this, there was nine years of it before that, or there were several years of it before that. Um, so we technically say that this is like year seven for us, but it's, it's year 13, I think, of the Eau Claire Marathon. Okay. All of them. When we took it over, very hometown, very Eau Claire community, you know, roughly around a thousand runners. First year we had it, uh, jumped to 2,000 runners. Then we jumped to 3,000 runners. Now we jumped to 4,000, then to 4,500. Last year we had 5,000 runners. We were right on board to have 5,000 runners again this year. Uh, with everything with COVID, it kind of stopped for a little bit. Um, I personally would like the race to continue to grow a little bit, but also, you know, a big part of, part of racing, and I don't think people realize this, is, you know, there's about, 30% of runners that come back to every race this year after year. There's about 70% of runners that do new races. So from our 5,000 runners last year, that's roughly only about 1,000 of them we for sure have in. Then we have to go out and find 4,000 new runners. Oh, yeah. Which is crazy. People don't think about it. I didn't think <laughs> about it when we took that over. Um, so a big part for me is to put on an event, to put on an experience that then people will go... I'm going to tell one, two, three people that this event was good and hopefully one of them will come back and join us. Okay. Uh, we have a uh, you know, full marathon. We have a half marathon. We have the four-person marathon relay that you were talking about. We have a 5K. And then we have the Sherry Alba Fantastically Fun Kids Run. So with you talking about ages, we have every age. Uh, we want uh, it to be a family event. The only way that I truly can go to an event these like in any day right now is – if, if it's family oriented, I want my whole family to be able to be involved from maybe my husband's going to spectate because it's bum knee, but I could run and then my kids could maybe be part of the relay or they could be part of the kids run. Um, and then we want, you know, a lot of opportunities that you're saying, like with firefighters to come in. We let a lot of charity groups come. My team triumph where they'll push the wheelchair uh, runners and raise money. Um, so just, I don't know. Did I answer all those questions? Oh, for that sure. You had? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I forgot what year this this was a couple of years ago and, and um, I I was behind a young man and he was wearing a the t-shirt proposal. the proposal yes. shirt yeah. and then I um, later on that day um, uh, after looking on social media I, I did see a picture of him proposing um, so it's interesting things like that and you do s see these things happen at races um, running and doing these events there's a lot of emotion and it is a um it is a really um great spot i guess to emotions kind of overtake and it's a great spot for memories like this do you have any other um things that have happened like during the eau claire marathon run that have kind of like always been in the back of your mind oh definitely um you know to me my if you would have to ask me what my favorite favorite part of the oakland marathon is it's the why we run it's the why people run and we do a big segment on it throughout the year to find out stories behind people and why they're running um that proposal fantastic love to be able to do stuff like that we've had um runners that have qualified for boston for the first time we had a runner that went down at mile Pretty much, I want to say it was like 23.3 a couple years ago. Oh my goodness, yes. Um, she ended up then from some intel of our, you know, one of our committee members, we found out that she was going to finish that last, you know, one point whatever miles that she had left. We ended up being at the finish line. Firefighters were around there. They started splashing water. We cheered her in. And that is one of the most memorable finishes. And it didn't even happen race day, which is crazy, right? But, <laughs> you know, to be able to be... Um, in an area and to have access to be able to do events like that and to have memories like that, um, that is a huge one. We've had, you know, hometown hero, Blue Ox running, opening, you know, a store, coming back, winning the marathon. 
I mean, what no. kind of story is that? That's really a, you know, fun. Or someone that, um, we had a younger guy that had a stroke that walked his first 5K. Oh. I mean, you know, things like that. We have a, w, a double amputee that is training for the half or the full this upcoming year. Double amputee. I mean, it's it's crazy. So that that's my favorite part, is being able to have an event that can enable these people to make those memories. Excellent. Yeah. Just amazing I could talk stories. To you for like three hours about just that. Amazing <laughs> stories every year, and a lot of them we probably don't even hear about, but the ones that we've heard over the last how many years, amazing examples of why we run. Uh, so, even though I feel like Emmy is the shark in the. Um, Inspire Me EC Shark Tank, um, she's not alone trying to organize this oh, yeah. event. So can we chat about the other people beside you that really help you um, take care and of I, the And I think out? shark's the perfect word, and they probably all think that about me too. No, I, I have the greatest committee. Um, my sister-in-law, Steph, is she does all of our merchandising, which I know we're going to talk a little bit about that, but yep. bravo, amazing, huge part of our race. Uh, my dad does our course. Um, and everyone thinks that you can just go and mark them, you know, mile marker and that's your 26.2 miles, but there's so much more that goes into it. We've got, um, several runners in Eau Claire. Uh, Matt Evans is a big runner in Eau Claire and he does the UWEC class and he's on our committee. So he helps with all these students that will come in. I'm telling you that I wasn't doing that in college. I was not getting up on a Saturday morning early to run 20 miles or 15 miles and they, he has figured out a way to get a hundred or more people every year to do that. I've got people that work at the university that help on the committee. I've got um, kind of my right-hand man, Heather, who helps with anything that I need help with. Uh, I mean, then it's husbands and wives. It's um, people that help in our warehouse. I mean, we've got, the list goes on. I could name them all, but it, it would not happen without them. And then you go on from there, you know, then we've got volunteer leads that will help with our 850 volunteers. So then you've got just the people that even help race weekend. So it's insane. I mean, right now our warehouse has 15 people in there, you know, in different areas helping fill orders, you know, grab the donations to bring to Minneapolis, everything like that. So it would it would never happen without the com the community and all the volunteers and my committee. Right. Yeah. That's that's a really good point too. So we're um, uh, myself and my fiance are trying to complete uh, 50 states and marathoning. So. Um, I think I've knocked out maybe 12 to 14 states. We've done a lot of traveling. Uh, we've done a lot of races. And what we've noticed is the volunteers are really what make the race. First, how, how can people volunteer? And just talk about um, maybe the number of volunteers that you have on, on a yearly basis. Yeah. Um, info at OakleyMarathon.com or actually volunteer at OakleyMarathon.com. They can do that too. And I mean, we need at least 850 volunteers, and it, there's even more. Because then we've got cheer stations that are out throughout the course. We kind of pick the dead spots where we know that it's hard for a car to get, or we know that um, a ton of people might not go. And we try to put a group of 10 to 15 people there. Um, this year in September, we don't know for sure how many people. It will all depend on how many CDC sets can be together. But you know, we try to get people excited. We try to put music out on the course. Uh, then you need. You know, the water station volunteers, we need people at our expo. We need people at all the intersections to make sure everyone's safe. Um, I mean, we need people helping in our warehouse. We need people out on the course. We have course marshals that go through it. We have bikers that are the greatest group of bikers. We have pacers. I mean, it. the list goes on and on and on. We have people that start the clock. We have people that take photos. It, it goes on. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah just going to give a shout out to the volunteers. Um, people are volunteering the weekend. Some of these are volunteers that would really love to race themselves, but um, they decide to give back, and uh, it's uh, it's for an amazing event with a lot of charities that are involved. So when you volunteer, you're not only just helping out the race; you're helping out these charities also. Well, that's a lot of the volunteers talk about that that we use is we give back. So we'll say to charity, we'll say to volunteer groups, you know, come, and then we'll give you a donation in return. So it's a way for them to also get some money for their cause at the same time. Awesome. Um, so this this year really has been like um, uh, none other. Uh, 
I just want to hopefully never have a year like this again, right? right yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. just um, I'm gonna uh, pay some respects towards um, the people in this city and across the country that have um, really went above and beyond and um, stepped up for this city um, and in this country. Um, it's a really dynamic and unknown time period. Um, but how has this pandemic challenged you on a personal level? Um, and what about like maybe your, if you're, when you're, your kids are of schooling age, did you have to dig into the, um, uh, I'm not only a parent, now I'm a teacher also. Yeah. Um, I will say I am a person that always tries to find the right side of every situation. This was a hard one at first to figure out, um, and to figure out, but I, I've been braced for family time. I've been braced for the, um, let's take a break and slow down a little bit. Um, my kids are very busy. I have become a fourth grade teacher. So I did have a little bit of schooling um, for my twins. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I say that that one year when I thought I was you know, gonna be a teacher in college, it's paid, helped a little bit. Oh, amazing, and, yeah. yeah. at this time. Um, I think that it's, um, I, I can't truly really even put it into words because I, I'm trying to, for the world, I'm hoping that everyone's going to try to take the positives out of it and what is truly um, necessary in your life and not missed and treasure races and treasure the outlet of running and, you know, turning the race in May to a virtual event. We were like, mm, how is this going to go? And it was a great month. It was so fun being able to follow people through social media, getting out there in the van and cheering some runners on. Um, we tried to really turn it into a positive event. Yeah, um, that that is. Uh, so how did how did Eau Claire Marathon um, 2.0 get decided on, and how did you specifically maybe choose the date, and how did that all how was that developed, and how did that unfold? Um, so we have on our website we pretty much have a a two week schedule of everything that went through the city or the governor or, um, you know, we were like, okay, well, if there's 250, we can maybe do this. The event's still going to happen. We were very hopeful. Um, but then it was finally when CDC said nothing over 250, we knew we weren't going to be able to have it. Um, but then I am part of a fantastic organization called the Running USA um, group. And I have sat on more Zoom calls than I will ever hope or ever wish to in my life with other race directors going, how do we continue to do this? How do we put on events? How do we keep the hope going? So for us, we went and we tried to think of any situation, like what would people want? They would either want to, um, you know, just postpone until next year, or they would want to um, run it virtually because they had trained. It's not like you're training and you're gonna stop. Um, they might want to transfer to another person and, or they would donate to, you know, we are very lucky to have another date that we came up with, but a lot of other city 5Ks that are just a big charity event, they did have that opportunity. So we've been able to use some of that donation money to help the Jeannie Ritchie um, run that usually can happen to help um, is that the, the good soul. Is that the puddle jump? Yep, the puddle jump, yes. So being able to take a little bit of our registration fees and help them. Okay. Yeah. Um, the, the date was um, a big Thank, thankful for the Eau Claire City Council and picking, a, um, working very closely with us to pick a date that worked in the city. We took every event that is going to happen this fall, and we did want to oversaturate the police because you know the police in Eau Claire are a big part of this race and keeping it safe and being on the course and intersections. And we did, um, so we wanted to stay away from Eau Claire homecoming. We wanted to stay from like you know fall festival events. We wanted to stay away from several different events and that was one weekend that worked for the city of Eau Claire and worked for our timer. Okay. He's another big part of it. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so I, when you're when we're kind of just talking about the um, we have the Eau Claire Marathon 2.0 but we did we just got done um, May ended the um, Eau Claire virtual races. Yeah. So my fiance and I we uh, we signed up for the 5k and this was only about a week after the Eau Claire Marathon last year, um, decided the 5K was something that um, we've 
participated in every other event, and 5K is something that we haven't done Eau Claire Marathon-wise, so we signed up. Um, well, let me just stop you. Then we have to say that you then, like, crushed the record and ended up winning the 5K, too, Sweet. right? Yes, yep. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yes. So we, we knocked out the 5K. We wanted to do the actual course, so we... Um, we woke up, we got out to the Madison Street Bridge, and uh, we went off. And um, one thing I, I, I want to um, give everyone a heads up on for the Eau Claire Marathon courses is, so especially the 5K, when you hang a right um, heading north onto Graham, you can basically see the finish line for about a half mile. And um, if you're running the full marathon or the half marathon course uh, or the relay, when you hang a left off of Main yep. or uh, off, off of, of Lake, Lake I'm yep. sorry, yep. you'll be able to see the uh, the finish line for a quarter mile. And there have been a couple races that I've participated in um, outside of Wisconsin that have had very long finish lines, and at the time it gets almost defeating. So like, oh, the finish line's that far away, but looking back at it, I feel like that's just a, an amazing feature to a race. Um, it's not just a finish line of 15 seconds and it's done. The finish line is the part of the marathon or whatever race you're signed up for. That is the one that you're probably going to remember the most. Maybe you remember the start a little bit, but mainly you'll remember the finish. And so love the love the finish line this year virtually it was different there wasn't really anyone, anyone cheering but uh love the course super flat excellent um so just gonna just gonna throw that out there um, and with the 5k um new this year we wanted them to be able to experience the barstow block um so we love the new course we're so excited for them to be able to experience that come september or next may um and with that new finish um since we took it over i love carson park i love carson park the carson park i don't love the carson park hill and i don't love that the after party in carson park is the after party it's not part of the 26.2 miles the 13.1 miles the 5k so to me this new finish is embracing and taking part of the race the finish line is now part of that 26.2 miles or that 13 or, you know, it's part of the race. And um, the first time I drove down it and I could just envision everybody around cheering, I went to myself, this is where it needs to be. I called my dad, he does a course and I'm like, let's do it. And we had a reservation, you know, it, 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 it's not an, it's not an easy, like, okay, you're just going to do this. There's a, a lot to it. Um, but I am so excited for everyone to be able to see the new course. I am too. Um, just, um, at first, when the information was thrown out there to the public that the course was changing, we love Carson Park, and it was kind of a centralized location. Um, you start and you finish there, but there were some maybe some issues as far as like the um, transportation. Um, people were kind of um, unsure about that, and we had to shuttle and downtown. There's more parking ramps. There's um, a it's just a little, maybe a little more accessible and even like post race um between like food selections and well, you could go to restaurants and, and, and we're allowing them to um take the advantage of the Eau Claire marathon weekend and letting them you know have the restaurants open and hope that they um have a huge weekend uh you know and for us somebody coming from out of town can truly come to the finish and park at the start line watch the start Watch them come through Phoenix Park, watch them come down Barstow, and watch them finish them in the middle because they don't want it. And we think that that is a big deal because then it's in the between there that they may be stopping at, um, you know, one of the restaurants. Or they could stop in for a piece of pizza or have a cup of coffee. Um, Chip uh, Cycle decided to do uh, um, a light. That truck is hauling away all of there the amazing donations from everyone. Thank you for uh, the donations. Anyway. Uh, but so they, uh, you know, what, so what we want, so then there's going to be a, an area where you can drop off your bike and you can check it in and they'll watch it for you and then pick it back up. So we're just really trying to make it a great centralized location 
um, for everyone to be able to use. And I think it's going to be great. Love Shift. Big shout out to Shift. Yeah. Um, their biking services and their coffee. Second to none. Yeah. Um, so, could you just uh, tell us about your? I know each year is probably a little different. Things develop, but your. Can you talk about your entire day during the whole fair marathon? Uh, when can we find you? Maybe waking up, and um, what issues or responsibilities um, do you have race day? Um, I always joke that my hair never um, dries for about the week of the race because I go to bed at about one and I wake up at about three. But I don't sleep, but that's fine. That's how it is. Then I try to sleep after the fact. Lose my voice. Um, you know, I am. I don't really have like an exact area where I am because I'm kind of all over the place. Um, I'll be at the start, then I'll be at the finish line. Um, you're around answering calls with the police, checking in where they need you. I, I purposely don't give myself a job, per se, so that I can be around wherever needed. Okay. Yep. Um, so, I... Uh... Talking um, about the course and the courses, um, could you maybe explain about the uh, Boston Marathon and how how does um, the Eau Claire Marathon get Boston qualified? It, it can't be as simple as someone strapping on a GPS watch to their wrist and running the course and saying, yep, good. Yeah. How does that happen? Um, so it's pretty technical. Um, so first for us, what we had to do was we had to come up with a course that we liked. Um, and then it's never exactly, you know, that exact distance that we want it to be. So um, we always start with the pole because that's what we want to qualify. Then from there, we'll do the half and the 5K because they're certified but not um, Boston certified. Uh, then you track the course, get it ready, and then you have to hire a certifier. Um, they have a bike that they use and that they come and they will certify the course to make sure it's exactly the 26.2 miles. And then it is submitted to Boston. And Boston will look at it to make sure if it's uh, if they want to consider it a race that's a qualifier for them. Okay. You know, it, um, I don't know, you know, exactly what they use for logistics for it, uh, but we've been very lucky that both of our courses have been considered Boston <laughs> qualifiers. I mean, yeah, and that is, Eau Claire Marathon provides a solid course for people looking to Boston qualifiers. Yeah. Is for sure. Yeah, we've been very lucky that we get a good amount of people that will pop by every year. Uh, so, you know, back when I uh, started marathoning, uh, maybe five years ago, actually, I did my first half marathon, um, Cinco de Mayo, okay. back in I want to say it was 2013. 2013, because that's the year I ran the relay. And it was okay. the orange Cinco de Mayo t-shirt? Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> the infamous Cinco de Mayo t-shirt. Yes. <laughs> we are just going to give a shout out to the Eau Claire Marathon Cinco de Mayo t-shirt from 2013. Yes. Okay. Um, but I don't know, maybe it was ego and I thought maybe that I could run my own race and I wasn't really a good pacer, but it seems like, you know, when I started out marathoning, um, and it's still true to this day, um, I've, I've got um, quite a bit better at it, but pacing, I I just want to, in, in other races also, like um, pacers are amazing. I've only had amazing experiences from pacers. They are spot on. They take the brain work out of, and the effort level, you just run along with them. You can meet um, other people that are trying to hit your goal. Um, I ran with a pacer last year at the Eau Claire Marathon, the half marathon, and these pacers are coming in within second. I mean, they're pretty much exact. And um, how how do you choose pacers? Um, I will say, and I, this is a bold quote, and it's it. We have the best pacers in the. And I will say that, and I will say that loud, and I will say that proud, because I think we do. Um, we have been very lucky that a lot of our pacers come back every single year, uh, so we don't have to go searching for pacers every year. We've had pacers that someone has gotten sick race day, that another one will show up and come run for us. Oh um, a big part of a pacing is, you know, they pace a distance that's a little bit slower than they would usually run, um, and then they have to be talkers. I mean, they have to be able to chit chat. We've got um, a pacer that usually does anywhere between our four and 445, that he's like the trivia master. 
and he always has like trivia questions for everybody. Um, and then people that understand it and have ran a lot of races, we always, at, you know, this year we're needing a couple new ones just because with the fall, there's Berlin, there's Twin Cities Marathon, there's still Chicago. Yes, Boston's canceled, but there's a couple races still going on. So we're switching that up a little bit. Uh, so we have to get a resume from them, see where they've raced before, talk to people that have raced with them. And for the most part, it's a lot of word of mouth that we've been getting, um, which has been very lucky for us. Excellent. But I would tell anybody that's running, use the Pacers. That is why they're there. That is why we have them, is use them. They know what they're doing. And, and Pacers don't necessarily just run at the pace. A lot of, a lot of great Pacers will call out aid stations, yep. maybe a quarter mile before the aid station saying, hey, we're going to stop at this aid station. You'll want to fuel up. The aid station's on the left. Yep. Um, or we have a hill coming up in a half of a mile, or we have a, a big downhill coming up in the next quarter mile, let's say. And they give you extra information where if you're not um, very up to snuff, I guess, on the course, yeah. They take the brain work out of that too. So um, excellent shout out to Pacers. Oh, yeah. I recommend them as well. Um, they really help you prevent from going out too fast. And if you have a history of going out too fast, get with a Pacer and see what your results are. Volunteers or anyone looking to assist, where do they go and who do they reach yeah, out to? So EauClaireMarathon.com, our social media pages are great places to find out information. Anything can go to info at EauClaireMarathon.com too, or volunteer at EauClaireMarathon.com. Okay. But website, social media pages has all that information. And I will show those um, links, um, those handles on the screen right now. Click on all of them or see them, remember them, and go to them. Uh, so when we talk about the Eau Claire Marathon and the Almond family, uh, we can't forget about Sherry Almond. I know you'd mentioned uh, her, um, her fun kids run. Um, she passed away in uh, 2014 from a serious biking accident and uh, the community uh, misses her deeply. What uh, legacy has Sherry left behind? And um, let's chat about her fun kids run uh, and the proceeds going to Life's Amazing Pass It On. Yeah. Um, when Again, going back to having to find this silver lining and everything. When she passed, I sat down with my kids and I'm like, what is something we can do to keep Grandma Sherry's memory alive? Um, and at the time, we did have a kids run. And they said she always loved running. And she was a uh, first grade teacher. And I was like, let's add a race. And I go, what kind of race? And should it be a half mile race? Should it be a mile race? Should it be what? And all my kids were like, an obstacle race. And she would love an obstacle race. And we have grown it to, I think we had almost 400 kids last year that did it. Um, and that's not even the main point of it for us. It's getting kids out there and just realizing how fun exercising can be. Uh, and, you know, then giving back afterwards. We can go to donations. We've donated books. We've donated um, to schools. We've donated, like, if we find um, during the year that kids need, you know, um, Christmas presents, we've donated in her name to that. So we try to... And for me, selfishly, it's a great way for my kids to um, keep the memory of their grandma alive. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. I know sometimes talking about um, relatives that have passed, but she left behind an awesome legacy and continues year in and year out. When you talk about the Eau Claire Marathon, um, people usually steer towards and talk about the Eau Claire Half Marathon. Such a great course. If you have kids, September, obstacle course, sign up. Yeah. I'm a super huge critic on race t-shirts. We have plenty of them from all over the country. Doesn't matter what kind of race it was, 5K, marathon, ultra marathon, and you register, and sometimes these registration costs are substantial, and you expect to get a, a quality race t-shirt or accessories or other merchandise that are high quality. And I have to say, Eau Claire Marathon's merchandise and race t-shirts are really second to none. I, um, I wear them um, on runs. I wear them sleeping. I wear them just casually mowing the lawn uh, with a nice pair of jeans or something. I can wear them, uh, the race t-shirts out to dinner. The, the text, this is getting super critical, but the text is really elegant. 
the shirt isn't completely slammed by sponsors all over the shirt. It looks very nice. How do you decide what colors every year? Who does your uh, who does your screen yeah. printing? Um, that shirt probably had um, shields overboard at the time because I made them. I'm not going to exaggerate. Bring in 50 shirts for me to try on because um, I would try a t-shirt on and then I'd have my husband try it on and I had someone else and we wanted to find that right shirt and we did. We found that right shirt. Um, I love it. I uh, think it's exactly, you pinned everything that we wanted out of it. We wanted it simple. We wanted to feel wear it all the time. We wanted it comfy. We wanted it to fit everyone. We didn't want it to be, um, like you said, slammed with everything on the back. So it's only our title sponsors that are on the back of it. And we want it to be noticeable. Uh, with race color shirts, we again we just kind of every year now that we're on year seven of it we just are kind of looking for different color combinations what will work with you know what's in right now um steph is our merchandise director and she is absolutely fantastic uh power tech does our printing here in eau claire for our race shirts okay. we've used career development we've just gotten a little too big um for that so um power tech does that and then we use a company in minneapolis that does all of our uh, sweatshirts and then we, you know, have partners with Gooder for our glasses. Now we have partners with Vocal Gear for our hats. Um, I would agree. I only wear Eau Claire Marathon gear, and I'm every single day. So it's something that I want to feel comfortable in. I want to like. Um, I want to be able to wear to the gym. So I pride ourselves myself on our gear. Yes. Yeah. Uh, amazing apparel. The um, the texture. Um, it's not a. It's not techy. But it's soft, and yeah, I've I've worn them uh, um, on ten mile runs, just casually, whatever. Excellent shirt, actually. The, the merch in general, um, as we were walking through the warehouse, there was a black Eau Claire Marathon trucker hat. I feel like that's new, and um, I'm, I think I'm gonna have to get that. I'm gonna have to get that. Um, so. We're going to talk about how to, um, so what are your social media handles? And also, um, Eau Claire Marathon, of course, has an app. If you're racing, you'll want to download that. If you're just listening or whatever, you'll want to look at that too, download it. Um, so what are your handles for uh, social media? And um, um, how can people stay Actually, what you, what is your website? Yep, so our website is www.eauclairemarathon.com. Okay. To stay up with the most updated news of what's going on, I would follow us on Facebook. You can search Eau Claire Marathon. On Instagram, Eau Claire Marathon, and on Twitter are the places that we have the most up-to-date information. Okay. Cool. And then our app, definitely Race Weekend, is a big part because that's a big part of it. Excellent. Yeah. So I just want to... Um, say in uh, Eau Claire Marathon in collaboration with Inspire Me EC, we're going to be doing a contest and we're going to be giving away um, some race registrations. The contest details are still developing, but I will post them when this video is, uh, when it goes viral, goes live, I will post those contest rules and um, you'll be able to, uh, especially so if you know someone that really kind of wants to get into running or some, you know, anybody can participate in this contest, but I really like to hear about new runners doing um, a 5K or a half marathon or whatever they would like to do. That it, the attraction here with this contest is to hopefully get runners to participate in something and hopefully it'll be a lifelong thing. Well, and a big part of right now with um, all the COVID-19 stuff going on is it's kind of a, it's, there's a new push for runners because gyms aren't open. So you're finding a lot of people that are out running. So I'm going to be excited when we race in either September or in May to see all these people that are, I just started running in March or I just started running in, you know, April or May. So I'm excited to kind of find out, meet some of those new runners. Yes. Uh, yeah, I just, um, just, um, my personal opinion on running is I almost do it probably more um, for the mental benefits than the physical benefits. Uh, and I want to say that there's probably only been a couple handfuls of times where I've felt worse after going on a run. 
if I'm not feeling well and I go for a run, I usually feel a lot better. Or if I'm feeling great and I go for a run, I feel even better than I did. And uh, I just have to advertise running or just being active. You don't have to be a runner, but just walking. It really is a big stress reliever and, um, you know, research shows it's, it's good for your fitness and your health. Just have to throw that out there. Please, I know there's people out there that don't maybe, that they're, they don't have, they, they feel like they don't have a running background or if they're, uh, they're not gifted. Anyone's a runner. Everyone, Everyone can be a runner. Is a runner. Yes. yes. I want to, we, we better conclude things. Emmy has taken uh, all of an hour out of her time um, for this interview, but we needed to dig into her, into her past and we need to learn about her. She is a heavy hitter in this community um, and we need to let her get back to doing all the warehouse things and donating um, going on right now. So I just want to thank you for this interview so much. No, thank you. And thank you for everything you're doing for Eau Claire. Thank you to, you know, being one of the runners that I love to put this race on for. Awesome. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you for tuning in to Inspire Me EC's very first social media channel video. A big heartfelt thanks goes out to Emmy Allman for uh, committing to this video. The times that she was in Eau Claire, uh, she was super busy with uh, race stuff, merchandising, all of the things at the warehouse, uh, the donations to uh, uh, the Minneapolis area. A huge thank you goes out to the uh, community for donating to that. That's, um, that's very awesome. Lots of donations went um, to help the cause over there. Moving forward, we have four registrations to give away. Four race registrations to give away. This is a combination between Eau Claire Marathon and Inspire Me EC. We decided that we wanted to give away some race registrations. So, two race registrations to the Eau Claire Marathon's 4th of July virtual 5K, 10K. Two race registrations. And two race registrations will be given to Eau Claire Marathon 2.0, whatever race you'd like to do. How the winners will be selected is starting tonight, June 17th at 9 p.m. Central Time to June 24th, 9 p.m. Central Time. You will need to like the Inspire Me EC Facebook page, the Inspire Me EC Instagram page, and when the video gets posted in the comments, we need you to tag a friend or family member that you'd like to do the race with, and we will be selecting four total people for those race registrations. Also, we'll put links in the video where you can uh, sign up for those races if you'd like to sign up for those races. There's not a lot going on right now. Sign up for the races. There'll be links in the video. Thanks again for tuning in. Inspire Me EC's video. I don't know about content. It's hard to beat Emmy Allman, but we're going to try to get better. We're going to try to make the channel better. We're going to make the video better. We're going to make the community better. Until we see each other again, Inspire Me EC out.